Along a deserted road in central Malaysia, the stench of death hangs over two small farming villages. I think we could have prevented a lot of people from dying if we had not ignored some rather uncomfortable facts. Most survivors of Bukit Plandok and Sungai Nipah have fled, and a quarantine has forced out the few that wanted to stay. Even the police have locked up and gone. 80 people from this village alone are dead. One family in every three has lost a loved one. And the $700 million industry that employed them is all but destroyed. The killer that came here had never been seen anywhere in the world and it now appears to have come because of a disastrous violation of the balance of nature. Ipo, two hours drive north of Malaysia's capital Kuala Lumpur, an old mining town, it's been hit by a rush of biological masks and airtight suits. Disease specialists here to track an illness that struck local farms seven months ago. This was ground zero, but all they knew then was pigs had a killer illness and people were getting sick as well. All the victims had a history of direct physical contact with live pigs. Dr Henry Tu, a leading pig disease specialist, is upset and angry as he looks back on events since September 29th last year, the day the first human illness in the current outbreak was reported. At some point in time, when the clinical features do not fit, all right, we have to consider the unknown. In fact, it was very much a known illness Malaysia's health system looked to as workers in Ipo's pig farm started dying. They blamed a common mosquito-borne killer in Asia, Japanese encephalitis, or JE and responded by fogging to kill mosquitoes anywhere they might infect animals or people. The diagnosis was a deadly mistake. It set Malaysia's response to a medical crisis on the wrong course for five months, while the likely cause of this epidemic was in the trees around them. The medical authorities were absolutely convinced, even in the middle of March, they were absolutely convinced that the outbreak was primarily J.E. They were convinced, but other experts like you... ...were not. I realised these uh, problems uh, sometimes uh, late in December. The crisis was still confined to farms around Ipo when virologist Dr. Azmi Mohamed Lila and others began expressing doubts about the JE diagnosis. Japanese encephalitis kills 10,000 people a year in Asia. Mosquitoes carry it from infected animals to humans, the disease then attacking the central nervous system, particularly in children. But in this case, it was adult pig farm workers who were dying. JE, of course, you know that JE won't cause problems in adults. JE normally causes problems in kids, in uh, young animals, or in uh, young humans, or not in adults. So in this case, basically based on this, you know that it's not really JE. Also ringing alarm bells among some veterinary scientists, large numbers of pigs were getting sick. Now, JE is not related, associated with clinical disease in pigs. So that is obviously one very, very important uh, uh, epidemiological feature that is completely inconsistent with JE. It is very clear that as far back as uh, October, November last year, warnings have been sounded that it could have been another viral agent, another virus, uh, killer virus. Yet, as opposition leader Lim Kitsiang points out, Malaysia's government went ahead, spending tens of millions of dollars vaccinating pigs and people against JE. Fogging to kill the mosquitoes that spread JE and ignoring warnings like the one posted on a medical website by a Malaysian scientist in mid-January. We must not forget to rule out other possible occupational causes. 
to admit that they have made a mistake in the focusing on JE when it was another viral uh, agent, I think um, politically uh, was something that they could not do. Lulled by the belief mosquitoes were the problem, not pigs, Malaysian authorities could see little reason to stop the trade in pigs around the country. Late in December, the killer broke out of Ipoh. At least one farmer did what is now unthinkable. He trucked highly infectious pigs three hours south from Ipoh, headlong into the very district where it could do hundreds of millions of dollars damage, near Sungai Nipah and Bukit Palandok, Southeast Asia's biggest pig farming area. How did the people in these pig industry villages react? As you do to a mosquito problem, with repellent, anti-mosquito fogging and JE inoculations. Many of those people had a false sense of security. They were told that you cannot get this disease by touching live pigs or handling live pigs. Which we now know is absolutely wrong. Yes, and I guess the farmers were given the wrong advice. That was fatal for many, wasn't it? Yes, it was definitely fatal for a lot of pig farm workers. Mother of six, now a widow, Yi Amoy, watched her husband slip into a coma and die. She says he'd gone to work at the pig farm willingly because he wasn't afraid of mosquitoes. The deaths were totally unnecessary and avoidable. If by last year they had uh, heeded warnings that it could be another viral agent. Malaysia's health minister declined our request for an interview, but some local specialists defend the Japanese encephalitis diagnosis they say overseas experts contacted back in December made the same mistake. To them, it didn't strike that it is a new disease, you know, because Malaysia had been endemic for JE. So they said, oh, maybe a new mutant JE. The advice gave Malaysian authorities confidence in their diagnosis. Sungai Nipah and Bukit Landok residents began fleeing because neighbours were dying. But officials told them to go back guard against mosquitoes and tend their pigs. They were finally ordered out in mid-March. By then, 54 people were dead. Malaysian authorities had discovered how wrong they'd been. Overseas tests confirmed this was not JE, but something far more frightening. A virus so new it needed a name, so they christened it after one of the villagers feeling its fury. They called it Nipah. It's a highly infectious disease in pigs, and uh, when the disease is on a pig farm, then our studies show that virtually all the pigs on that pig farm become infected, and so pigs really are a, an important host of this animal, of this disease. Nipah virus a new entry on the sobering list of zoonoses or animal diseases that pass to humans. AIDS and Ebola are on the list. So too is Hendra, named after the Brisbane suburb where it surfaced five years ago, killing horse trainer Vic Rail. It is similar to Nipah virus. We see this as another instance of a trend that's observed worldwide at the present time where uh, diseases previously unknown to, to medical and veterinary science are suddenly emerging. What we're saying is we'll go in and have a look at the pig in the, uh -huh. in the clinical setting. As Australian Peter Daniels and others began their hunt for the mystery species that passed Nipah to pigs, Malaysia's army moved in for the country's biggest ever animal culling. Almost one million pigs, virtually half the industry, shot and shoveled into pits on the farms where they were buried.
When survivors slipped behind quarantine lines to see what Nipah had left, many found the piggeries looking more like they'd been hit by a missile than a virus. An occasional unburied carcass, the only sign this was ever a pig farm. What we want to do at that time was just to uh, stop the infection into the human as fast as possible. Whatever it takes uh, that time to uh, get rid of the pig is being done. On and sometimes that meant levelling. That meant levelling. But the ethnic Chinese in charge of most piggeries here read it more as a religious attack by the Muslim majority. Devout Muslims despise pigs. <laughs> Shocked, grieving, angry, farmers set out to win back some of their losses. The Mahatia government offered $20 a pig compensation. Farmers demanded 80. They stormed the offices of a government minister, winning nothing in the short term but demonstrating the destruction of their once mighty industry had become a powerful issue among the Chinese lobby. This could be the end of the pig industry in this country, I would say so. Because we, we, we look at the way they compensate and everything, you do not have enough capital to rebuild the whole thing again. Ready? With the pig industry collapsing around it, Malaysia's Veterinary Services Department kept its own video record of the effort to trace Nipah to its source in nature. It shows key moments as the local and visiting Australian and US scientists work to understand what they're dealing with, like finding the rogue virus not only in pigs, but in this dog. Peter, do you see opaqueness in the eye as well? It's hard to say. I can see what you're saying, yeah. Tests on horses and cats also came back positive for Nipah. They're still waiting for results from 300 species, including from this goat. Get a close-up of this. This is there's something going on here. Look at this. The virus had shown it could easily jump from pigs to other animals. It was not what Malaysian authorities had wanted to hear, given some of the destroyed piggeries were on the fringe of Kuala Lumpur's new international airport. It had suffered a recent plague of rats, and the scientist's own video shows rats in an infected piggery. Certain other animals have been detected with virus infection, but only in circumstances where they've been in close contact with infected pig farms. Yeah. Come on, buddy. With details from the disaster to the south, some mysteries back in Ipoh began unravelling. Vets at the local turf club recalled two horses that died of an unexplained illness last October. There were other horses also that, sh that, that were put down showing neurological symptoms, you know, from time to time. And they were always, we had always tested them for for JE and they're always found to be negative. Now they've gone back to the same stables as the two earlier cases next to a pig farm and found two more horses positive for Nipah. So could the earlier cases have been the undiscovered virus? Yes, but we didn't test, we were not looking for the disease then. So and we don't know? We don't know, yeah. And it's on that very pig farm, next to the quarantined horses, you get a chilling sense this might just be where Nipah made its deadly leap from unknown host to pigs. It too is quarantined, though Malaysian authorities took us for a look. Once a giant piggery, its 30,000 pigs are now buried like those at Sungai Nipah and Bukit Plandok. But there's a crucial difference in the stories
from survivors of Leong Sin Nam Farm. They talk of sickness not just in recent months, but two and a half years ago. It was early 1997. We found most of the workers, they felt sick unusually. You know? At least 20 workers went down with fever and uh, for a long time. In January 1997, this man slipped into a coma for eight days. Adimolam Rajulu was hospitalized for almost a month. Doctors diagnosed him and four other farm workers with viral encephalitis. One died. Could it have been J.E.? Problem is, the vets then were struggling, just as they would two years later, to explain signs right out of character with Japanese encephalitis. Here too, there was a sudden jump in the death rate among the pigs. In uh, places where we have about only 5%, it uh, shot up to about 10%, double the number of uh, pigs that usually die. That was quite unusual. So was the Nipah virus here more than two years before scientists finally caught up with it in the midst of Bukit Blundock's disaster? Yes. A blood sample saved from the time of Adimolam's illness proves it. We managed to dig out that uh, sample of serum and we found it was positive for Nipah virus. This man had Nipah? Yes, he had Nipah. Late 96 or 97, Nipah must have been present during the time. Still suffering after effects from his illness and now retrenched from a deeply troubled industry, Nipah's first known sufferer is not so sure he's lucky. Yeah, I don't know I'm not really yeah. So might this farm have an answer for the critical question of where the virus came from? In fact, for scientists who know of Australia's experience with Hendra virus, this landscape rings alarm bells. A farm carved out of jungle next to limestone mountains, habitat for bats, fruit trees, hundreds, growing in and around the piggeries, food for bats. A virus closer than any other to Hendra, which is known to have come from the large bats known as flying foxes. You have the prehistoric animal and the modern animal being brought together. The virus from, this, uh, from the uh, prehistoric animal, I would say from the uh, flying foxes, crossed the pit. But it's quite plausible um, looking at the, uh, the, the, the location and also the, uh, the way the pit were infected. Uh, mostly in areas where fruit trees are abundant. 500 kilometres away, in Malaysia's far south, researchers have been collecting flying foxes. Already, five have tested positive for exposure to Nipah virus. It's not yet proof, but the research team now says bats are the likely culprits for Nipah. If it's in a uh, mobile, you know, free-flying animal such as a, uh, a fruit bat, then uh, you might expect to find this virus throughout the, uh, the range of, uh, of that particular species. It's a sobering thought for nearby countries. Pigs can be stopped at the border. Bats can't. The possibility that this particular uh, wildlife uh, travel is there. So if... Uh, if uh, those wildlife were infected with Nipah, they will definitely infect, uh, uh, infect any of those uh, domesticated species, swine, horses, uh, dogs, cats, anywhere in the world for that matter, as long as they can reach them. The danger is there, the potential is there. Scientists will probably never know if the virus made its ill-fated hop from flying foxes to pigs on this property, but they say it doesn't matter. Nipah's lessons are already there and they're telling for modern farming. Wherever we have increased uh, population densities of, uh, you know, of any animal species, then we create a situation where disease can move rapidly among them. The moment we tip the balance, the environment, the ecology will fight back to find the equilibrium. Running giant numbers of animals for efficiency, 
mixing industries for profitability, pushing closer to the habitat of wild species for productivity. In Malaysia, large-scale modern farming appears to have barged in on a species it simply couldn't afford to mix with. Late in December, the killer broke out of Ipoh. At least one farmer did what is now unthinkable. He trucked highly infectious pigs three hours south from Ipoh, headlong into the very district where it could do hundreds of millions of dollars damage, near Sungai Nipa and Bukit Palandok, Southeast Asia's biggest pig farming area. How did the people in these pig industry villages react? As you do to a mosquito problem. <laughs> 